it. Um, the sad news about it is that nine out of 10 people who are living with hepatitis B and C are unaware that they actually have it because most people um, do not have any noticeable symptoms and so they don't know that they are actually infected. I'm Dr. Eternity Labio. I'm a hepatologist at Makati Medical Center in, in Makati at, in the Philippines. And my subspecialty is, um, I, my practice is focused on seeing patients with um, liver diseases. So um, hepatitis is a medical term that is used to describe conditions um, uh, with involving inflammation of the liver. So um, the most common causes of um, hepatitis is usually viral hepatitis, but there are also non-infectious causes. So viral hepatitis is caused by uh, the most common viruses, which are you know five types of viral hepatitis, which is hepatitis A. B, C, D, and E. But there are also non-infectious causes of hepatitis. The most, the two most common causes of non-viral hepatitis would be um, alcohol-related, so excessive um, drinking of alcohol. And another most common cause of um, non-viral hepatitis is fatty liver disease um, when you are overweight or if you are um, obese. So viral hepatitis, particularly um, hepatitis B and C, is actually, um, they're actually uh, estimated to be 350 million people worldwide who, have, who are living with hepatitis B and C. And particularly in Asia, a third of, um, a third of that burden are actually in Asia, particularly where we are in the Western Pacific region um, around a hundred um, over a hundred million people are living with hepatitis b uh, in the western pacific region where the philippines is and over 10 million people um, have are living with uh, hepatitis c and i single out hepatitis b and c because these two um, infections are actually the most common cause of liver damage or liver cirrhosis and the most common cause of liver cancer as well. And uh, with the burden of disease, we have millions of people infected. Um, the sad news about it is that nine out of 10 people who are living with hepatitis B and C are unaware that they actually have it because most people um, do not have any noticeable symptoms and so they don't know that they are actually infected. So I probably like to start with hepatitis A. So hepatitis A uh, um, can be preventable. So there is a vaccine for it. So hepatitis A can be spread by consuming food that is, con that is contaminated by um, feces or by poo from an infected um, person. So if you consume um, food or drink that is contaminated by stools or feces from an infected person. So this um, infection, the hepatite, hepatitis A, um, is very common in countries where there is um, poor sanitation or unhygienic um, practices. Um, so for example, this is very common when you travel to a country with um, poor, poor sanitation. So you this can be prevented. So for example, when you travel to a country, um, uh, you're a traveler and so you, you, you can, this infection can be prevented by getting vaccinated um, against the hepatitis A virus. Um, hepatitis E is also similar. Um, to hepatitis A, it can be it can be spread by consuming poorly prepared food or raw or undercooked um, pork or meat. So unfortunately, um, there is uh, no no vaccine for hepatitis E at the moment. 
but um, there's also no specific treatment for hepatitis A and E. So uh, treatment is usually non-specific, just treatment to relieve symptoms. So that is for hepatitis A and for hepatitis E. Now for hepatitis B and C, these, these viruses can be spread uh, through contact with blood or body fluid um, with an infected person. But I want to single out hepatitis B because hepatitis B, specifically in the Asian region, can be spread from an infected mother to her child at birth. So that is the most common way of how the virus how the hepatitis B virus is transmitted. And there is a vaccine uh, to prevent um, the spread of hepatitis B from mother to child. So it is important that pregnant mothers get themselves tested for hepatitis B to prevent the virus from being passed on to their, to their babies at birth. So it's important that um, pregnant mothers get screened. So if they are positive, they can have their babies immunized at birth um, with a vaccine. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the liver is a very resilient organ. So I would have to say that um, in the early stages of any liver disease, there are actually no noticeable symptoms. So people can really seem to be looking healthy, feeling healthy. Um, so it is really important that everybody gets, gets um, tested and screened if you think you have risk factors for liver disease. So um, if you think that you have or you, you drink excessively, uh, so you can have a you drink alcohol in excess, so you should have a blood test or an ultrasound or what we call um, a, a test for liver scarring or liver fibrosis. And if you think you, you have excess body weight and you're not maintaining healthy weight, you should get yourself tested for fatty liver disease. And also, if you have a family history of liver cirrhosis or liver cancer, then you should also get yourself tested for hepatitis B or C because, uh, or get yourself vaccinated for hepatitis B, especially if you live in Asia where um, there is a high burden of viral hepatitis B or C. So again, so we don't rely on symptoms because we really want to promote early testing and early, early uh, treatment, even when you don't have symptoms yet. Um, and but again, when you when the liver disease has advanced, then you can symptoms can include um, generally feeling unwell. Uh, you can have yellowish discoloration of the skin or yellow yellow uh, yellowish discoloration of the white of the eyes. Uh, you can have itchy skin. Um, you can have internal bleeding. You can vomit blood. Um, also, you can have swelling of the legs or ankle and you can have a distended belly. So really those are, when you have these symptoms of liver disease, usually these are symptoms of um, liver cirrhosis or when your liver is no longer functioning properly. And uh, these are actually symptoms of liver cirrhosis or your, your, the function of your liver is already compromised. So we want to be ahead of that. And you know, these most liver disease are, are actually preventable. And, and so we want to promote early testing, early treatment, and uh, before symptoms, before liver disease has advanced. Because once you test positive, even if you feel healthy and you don't have any noticeable symptoms. I mean, it's important that you get yourself because treatment is available for hepatitis B. And once you um, start antiviral treatment for hepatitis B, this can reduce the complications of the infection. Um, this can reduce your chances of developing cirrhosis and liver cancer if you start um, antiviral treatment. And for hepatitis C, most importantly, um, if you test positive for hepatitis C, there are there is a cure that is available. So um, that it, so most of these antiviral therapies for both um, hepatitis B and C are effective. They are safe and it re really reduces um, the complications of the disease. Um, 
for hepatitis A and B, there, there, as I've mentioned earlier, there is an available vaccine. Um, so, so, so the infection is entirely preventable. So, I think the the message is clear that um, it is these 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 viral infections are preventable, and even if you test positive, um, uh, effective antiviral therapies are are also available as well. So alcohol-related liver disease has, has actually many stages, I mean, similar to fatty liver disease. So for, for fatty liver disease, are you maintaining a healthy weight and um, choosing a healthy lifestyle uh, would actually be the best prevention for it. And actually it can be reversed even if you already have fatty liver disease um, by, by maintaining a healthy weight and um, choosing you know a healthy lifestyle can actually reverse fatty liver and um, for alcohol of course um, staying within the the healthy limits of alcohol can uh, can can actually reverse or even stopping drinking alcohol altogether can prevent progression of their liver disease due to alcohol because those are really the you know the the top the top causes of liver damage globally I think the most the most important message that I want to get out there is we only have one liver, and um, we should take care of it. And so I guess now that it's it's um, you know there are effective um, vaccines out there, effective therapies out there, we should really improve access to getting tested, getting diagnosed, and getting treated if you have viral hepatitis B or C. Um, and if, uh, you know, knowing, recognizing that fatty liver disease is very common, we should um, try to maintain a healthy lifestyle, avoid drinking alcohol in excess, and that way we take care of our, our liver and live a healthy life.